Today we're gonna be looking at Edifoca Limited, that's ticker symbol learn on the Jamaica Stock Exchange. So we're gonna do a full company overview, understand a little bit about the company and what it does. We're gonna look at the, their recent financial performance. They would have released their Q2 financials earlier this year. And then we're gonna talk about the company's dividend policy. They would have stated that in, in their prospectus. And then finally cover any news that may have been released about the company and then talk about what we think it means for the future of the company. So it's going to be a good review. Be sure, even from now, to like the video. Um, let's get started. Learning is the key to successful investing. And who doesn't want to invest in some way? Here at Learn Grow Invest, we focus on financial education, all with the aim of sharing our knowledge on personal finance, investing and building wealth. We do this on the foundation of our faith in God. If a more holistic approach is what you need, check out our Grow Faith-Based Financial Coaching Program. Find out more about us at learngrowinvestclub.com and follow us on all social media platforms at Learn, Grow, Invest. So let us pray. Thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you for the ability to produce wealth. We pray, Lord, for wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. In your name we pray. Amen. All right, so let's go. Good night, everyone. Definitely happy that you're with us here again. Let me know who's in the chat. Let me know where you're joining from. And, you know, we will we'll have a talk at the end of the review. So this is our new review format. It's going to be 30 minutes or less. And that's just based on feedback from you, our community members, who wanted to get the same valuable information just in a shorter time. So we've been working on doing that. Let us know your feedback, though, how you like the new format in the comments below. All right, so this stock review is sponsored by JMB Moneyline. We'll be using them to look at the price history of Learn. And so if you want to learn more about JMB Moneyline, be sure to check the link in the description. All right, so before I go any further, I have to say anything that I discuss here is for education, entertainment, and illustrative purposes only and should not be construed as professional financial advice, solicitation, or recommendation to buy or sell any securities. We are financial coaches here at Learn, Grow, Invest, not financial advisors. So as I mentioned before, the overview that we're gonna use is, is shown on the screen. So just an overview of the company to help you understand the products and services that they offer. Then we're gonna talk about the financials for a little bit, just the highlights because they would have IPO'd earlier this year, so we don't have a great deal of financial history, really. Typically, we'd go through five years, but I'm just going to be focusing on the six-month financials because the company would have gone through quite a bit of transformation over the last few years. So it's almost like it's a brand new company if you if you look at just you know how much they've grown. So I think the last six months compared to last year would give a good you know idea as to the growth of the company. And so looking at the, five, the last five years might be a little bit, um, might not give us the same insights, right? Next, we're going to look at the price history, as I mentioned before. So they would have IPO'd at $1. And we look at where the price ended at today. Talk about their dividend policy. They have not yet issued any dividends, but it was mentioned in their, in their prospectus, um, their plans, should they be able to get to... Um, a certain profit so we'll talk about that when we get there and three key pieces of information in terms of news were were released about the company we're going to talk about that in a few moments as well all right so let's get started edifocal is a jamaican education technology company the company is focused on using technology to enrich learning experience for both inside and outside the classroom as well as to help ideate and innovate the way in which Jamaica and eventually the rest of the region moves forward with technology in education. So that's telling you the focus of the company, right? So education, technology, education, which means they can really touch on anything that has to do with learning or teaching, right? Both sides of, of, of that coin. And then the idea here is that they mention Jamaica and then eventually the rest of the region, right? Which means they would have you know, been been signaling in in this description that I took from the from the prospectus their plans in terms of possibly expanding throughout the region. Then it says Edifocal provides an engaging and immersive learning experience for students and also corporate learning solutions for organizations. Their platform facilitates the following: full-time online school, evening 
extra classes, live homework sessions, learning labs, test prep, and so on, right? So this, again, just gives you some insight. So they, they would have been well known for their PEP classes, but they've since, you know, expanded the scope of the company. We're going to talk about that breakdown on the very next slide. And here we have the CEO of Edifocal, that's Gordon Swaby. We did an interview with him a few months ago. So be sure to check that out. I'll actually ask Rene to share that link with our CEO series interview so that you can have a watch immediately after this video. So two key areas of the business currently, this may change over time, but this, has what, this was what was communicated in the prospectus. So you have Edifocal Learn, which is a social learning platform that combines study with play. So that's the gamification aspect of learning. Uh, primary offering is focused on test prep for the PEP exams. And then they would have launched Edifocal Academy, which provides a full day learning program. And this is through a subscription model for, for the users. Then you have Edifocal Business, which launched in 2020 and is focused on delivering industry-specific e-learning content, right? And we'll talk about that a little bit later. Uh, so, you know, two main areas here. You, you have the learn side and the business side, each with a specific target in terms of customers and how they plan to build out the business. So they would have released their prospectus earlier this year on, Feb on February 17th. They raised a total of, or they were seeking to raise a total of 129 million at a share price of a dollar. And the use of those proceeds were a repayment of their short-term debt and uh, to, to expand the company through, through, through acquisition. We have one such acquisition to mention. Those of you who have been you know, regulars on our channel might have heard about it before, but if it's the first time you're hearing about it, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that soon. So next, let's kind of look at the high-level financials. So in, in terms of the financial highlights for their most recent, for their six months ending June 30th, they would have increased their net income by 321%. So in 2021, they were actually um, uh, a negative 5.2 million here, but they would have grown that to 11 million for the six months in 2022. Their, 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 their revenues would have increased to 132 million, and that's definitely uh, a good sign for them. I, I remember in the prospectus it mentioned the target was somewhere around the 300 million mark. So at the six month mark to be close to half that goal, that's that's definitely a good sign. So the Q3 will tell us a lot about how they are able to to get to the goals that they would have set in the prospectus. Right? If you miss the prospectus review, just be sure to check out that video. Earnings per share currently at one cent, but definitely would have grown from where it was last year. And of course, total assets would have grown as well. So, I mean, for this kind of company though, their core asset would be their, their technology. So that's something that it, it's not for, for a tech company is not going to be an, an abundance of tangible assets. Their, their main asset would be the technology that they're developing. Uh, so that of course, is what we're likely to see when we look at the balance sheet. So let me actually bring up those six months financials now. So this this can be found in the description as well. So I'm just going to go through the highlights here in the interest of time. So we mentioned this before, the Edifocal Academy, that's there. Um, so for other areas of our of our learn division, we are expanding to other revenue lines and we have seen great progress, specifically health education and soon financial education. So this is telling us here there are um, two key areas of focus or at least um, what was mentioned here. So health education, I was trying to find some more information on this. Um, nothing was published, but I believe it was referenced maybe in, in another space. I'll, I'll try to find it at least here, um, but that space, health education. If someone here remembers, um, if, if you have gotten any information on that, please share it. Uh, financial education, I tried to get some information on that, but it's not yet confirmed and finalized. So as soon as it is, we'll, we'll hear some more about that. On the business side, they continue, 
they continue to onboard new corporate customers and they're aggressively growing their corporate learning offerings, right? So I've mentioned a few of these partnerships before. So this would be a further building out of that. Um, hopefully we'll get some insight into this by, by the end of the year to understand just, you know, the, the, the scope of their current um, client base on the business side. But as I said, a few key ones would have been mentioned before from the, from the prospectus. These highlights were what we mentioned before. Um, so let, let's get to Edifocal LLC. So there was an acquisition for Clevo School Teacher. Um, that's a software as a service business in March 2022. So that was, you know, shortly after they would have listed. And this allowed them to forge a path into the American EdTech marketplace by acquiring a large database of Kinder content that will enhance their ability to reach other territories so that so so that acquisition seem to you know be able to to position them to expand both um within the us and to other territories garden would have shared a bit about you know just the possibilities on that of that platform on our interview so definitely be sure to check that out and it says here, we are currently in conversations to leverage the content for B2B opportunities in both the United States and Jamaica, right? So this is something that we are, we are expecting to see more of in terms of development, but this is definitely a good sign for the company. So at the end of this quarter, they are laying the foundation for growth and have made significant progress in rebranding CST and are now creating resources internally, all right? And, and I say, try and say in here that Gordon spoke spoke about nurses who want to seek employment in the state. Yes, that's, that's the name I was looking for, the NCLEX exams. That was it, definitely. All right, thank you for that. Uh, next, um, so let's look at, I believe this was what you would have shared. I'm not exactly sure, but this, I believe, was just some of, maybe some of the screenshots that we would have seen. Um, so to give you, you know, an, an idea as to what to to, to expect in terms of the possibilities of, of the Clever School Teacher platform. Um, let me just scroll through here because these are the highlights. All right, so Edifoca Limited has seen tremendous growth in business and partnership sales of 57.8 million and 22.3 million respectively due to new contracts awarded. Uh, the groups Profit would have increased to 40.6 million when when compared to the quarter in 2021. And let's see here. We, we spoke about the growth in net profit already. Uh, however, the performance was somewhat modulated by higher finance costs and impairment on financial assets over the comparative period. So um, this was something that would have spoken about when we did the prospectus review. Um, you know, just it's, it, it's something that would, would have been um, a part of their history in terms of high finance costs. I know Garden would have spoken to it at length. So when, when, when we get to the part about them, them receiving a loan facility from Mayberry, you know, we'll talk about some of the things that Gordon would have said at that point about the benefit of that, of that financing model. And then, um, then in, in terms of the, the, the impairment on financial assets, again, that was covered in our interview. So let's go to, let's go to the balance sheet first. Um, focus here really, just, just a few things. Again, based on the type of company, I think we're really only interested in seeing. So, so right here we see the growth in intangible assets. Again, being a technology company, this is where you'd you'd see or or pay attention to in terms of assets. So from 66 million to 116 million. I would assume as well this would include the, the clever school teacher um, you know uh, infrastructure. Um, there would be receivables and prepayments. Um, so if, if it was just receivables, um, then this might have been a, 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 a potential concern, but receivables and prepayments. Prepayments mean our customers might pay in advance or it's a contract maybe they got in, you know, deposit, et cetera. But 
this would, I assume, be on the corporate side mainly, or maybe the work that they do with government, etc. So this is something that you want to take note of. It does impact cash flow, but it's a sign of a growing business. So it's something just to, to, to take note of there. Uh, cash and cash equivalents, 728 a uh, thousand here yes thousand i just wanted to be sure so that would almost explain why they would have needed the 200 million dollars from from mayberry but again we'll talk about that later right because this would have signal um you know cash being you know deployed and maybe used used up now they would have needed to 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 increase that to be able to come to continue with their strategy of you know expansion acquisition and so on in terms of liability now the word that we got is that um the mayberry loan that they would have received would be the only current debt on their balance sheet so we'll see when the the uh q3 financials come out so so most of these debt that we're seeing here in terms of liabilities should not be reflected on either the next report or 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 the one after depending on how how long they take to be closed out so I don't I don't think really need to to look into this too too deeply until we get to the Q3 financials, right? But we can expect to see that loan from Mayberry on their balance sheet um very soon. All right. So and and they would have had a net net surplus here or retained earnings of 13 million here increased from 1.4 million a year ago, right? Let's look at revenue again. That's that's what we'd be interested in. And as I said, it kind of tells the story of the growth of the company. Uh, so six months last year, 50 million. This year is 132 million. So that's definitely um, significant growth in the first six months. What we want to do though is, is understand. So there was a, um, a piece of information that they shared in the prospectus about average revenue per user. They, they, anticipation here is that we may get that breakdown in the annual report to see you know where where this you know 132 million where, where, what's what's the makeup of of this amount right um, admin expenses were 89 million so gross profit would have been 43 up from 3 million the same same period last year profit before tax for last year was negative 6 million it's now 11 million, so that's definitely um, a positive sign there. No taxation because junior market company, so now they don't have um, to pay taxes for the first few years, and so on. We've covered that before. So earnings per share would have seen an increase from being negative last year to now being, as I said, one cent. Again, we want to see how this, you know, progresses over the next few years. Right, and in terms of cash flow, let's look at that to see if there's anything that stands out to us. Um, we'll just focus on the six months here. So let me zoom in a little bit. Um, so we see here, um, so impairment loss of 21.5 million. We see Increase in receivables, we'd have seen that before. Um, increase in payables, 14 million. Interest paid of 9.8 million. And in terms of investing activities, so acquisition of intangible assets, so we mentioned that before, that's listed as 60 million. So this could possibly be the acquisition for a clever school teacher um again I, I mean i don't I, I don't i don't know if this this confirms it but that's what i would be anticipating because we don't have any other acquisition during during the period um let's see short term loan 66 million and proceeds from the ipo that's what you're seeing there all right uh let me see if it mentions anything about the acquisition that acquisition here so acquisition of subsidiary okay All right here we go so on january 11th eddie focal acquired 100 percent of eddie focal llc on march 22nd eddie focal 
acquired the website and assets of Denver-based K1 EdTech. Spoke about that before. Um, so yeah, I suspect that that 60 million is is referring to that. All right, cool. So that's the the most recent financials there. So we are waiting for Q3, and definitely we want to see what the annual report will show us. But you know, all signs are pointing so far to them being able to to, to at least. Um, well, the interesting thing here is that um, I would have loved to have seen maybe the the financial history, or at least maybe get some some understanding of the potential of CST. But again, let's. Let's see what their Q3 looks like and take it from there. So let's talk about the price history now. And again, because it's we're sponsored by JMB Mon Moneyline for the stock review, I'll go to the platform in a second to just look look at the Q, see the orders that went through today, etc. So closed today at 275. The IPO would have been one dollar. So it's still up 175% since IPO. So that's at uh, that's definitely good to see. Uh, so let's just pretty much go straight to, to Moneyline. Let me refresh first. So a few things that you are not going to see here because of, again, just the span of data that we may have access to. So we don't have year to date. Um, interesting to see in terms of volume traded, though, up, up to 29 million units would have been traded. Uh, shares Shares... Outstanding stand at 648 million and market cap is currently 1.7 billion. All right, so let's bring up money line here. All right, so let me go to stock summary. We're gonna search for learn. All right, I may have to zoom in a little bit. Hopefully you are able to see it just fine. So usually what I like to do is just get an idea of how the, how the stock traded for the day. So with, with Moneyline, we're able to do that. So we saw 26,000 units, 14,000 units. Those would be largest volume for the day. Uh, traded within 272 and 280. Um, so based on, on opening price, final change for the day is, is less than 1% uh, in terms of the chart over the last few months so its peak i believe would have been let me see what it was before there i think we have the high 420 was the high earlier this year so um you know that would have happened around april i mean again it was it was seeing great growth but of course naturally with with every IPO, there's somewhat of a correction after a few days or weeks of trading. So that's what we would have seen. And since then, really, since about May, it's been trading between $3 to about, I think it went as low as $2, right? So it's really a bit between that range, currently at $275. So, you know, again, with, with, with more financial data, we can do a deeper analysis here. Volume really doesn't exceed maybe around four or five million on most days it's going to be below a million so that's what we're seeing um yeah so i mean that's more or less normal on the sell side we're seeing uh large orders i like to to look at usually the smaller ones so the larger ones i look at to see maybe if if it's maybe a top 10 member selling or maybe there's there's a there's a large order on the buy side I tend to look at. So those are the things I'm I'm looking for really when I'm looking at the queue. So um hundred and two thousand units, one hundred thousand units, one hundred and seventy four units at three seventy nine. And that goes up of course you'll have people selling <laughs> as high as fifty dollars. I don't know how long you have to wait for that, but you know there you go. On the buy side uh, largest order that we're seeing 955,000 at 250. Um, you know, so we, we may or may not see that order be, be filled soon, depending on market conditions. Um, yeah, 280,000 at 220. All right, so that's it, really. Let me go back to presentation, right? Um, 
So let's talk about their dividend policy. Not much to say here, really, because they mentioned that what they're going to be doing is, um, you know, basing the decision on what their needs may be at the time. So it says here, uh, the company's revenue streams are recurring in nature and the board expects that the company will have excess profits over and above its, its um, reinvestment needs. Based on that expectation, the company has adopted a dividend policy targeting a payout not exceeding 25% of net profits after tax. So what this should tell you is, so, so let's see that Let's see that uh, Q3 comes out. We may get an idea as, as to what the net profit may look like. Again, we don't know what their Q4 will be. But let's say you do an, an estimation of what their total net profit would be. Take 25% of that, divide by shares outstanding, and you'll get the potential dividend per share. All right? So let, let's, let's talk about the news now and all of this i took from their websites let me actually read it from their website because i definitely love to see when companies invest in sharing information so this was definitely good to look on their website and see um so the press release is here let me zoom in um here so i zoomed in on the wrong screen sorry about that there we go so i'll, I'll go in order of most recent um so to, to to earlier in this year so we spoke about um a 200 dollar million loan facility from from mayberry so it says eddie focal has advised that um they entered into a loan agreement with mayberry investments for an amount of 200 million so eddie focal has advised that the proceeds of the loan facility were received by the company on on september 30th and will be used to pay related party debt, loan refinancing, and working capital for expansion purposes. So if it was received on September 30th, I assume it should make it on the Q3 financials because Q3 would have ended September 30th. I'm not sure though. So let's see when it comes out. The terms of the loan facility are unsecured loan facility for a principal sum of 200 million. Term is seven years. So it's due in 2029. Interest rate will be fixed at 9.5%. And I remember one of the things that Gordon said at the investor briefing that he held with Mayberry is that, you know, based on the state of the, the um, economy and the cost of, you know, borrowing, et cetera, he thought it was an, an attractive rate. So having it be a fixed rate is good, as, especially if we're expecting rates to, to increase. Um, and then payments will be made quarterly in an amortizing structure. All right. So that's the first one that we're we're looking at. So we're waiting to see what they do with that capital. So it spoke about expansion. They would have done one acquisition already. We'll see what 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 the next one looks like. This was released in August. This is a partnership with the Jamaica Library Service. So my understanding of this partnership is that there were there were no cash considerations. It's it's really about infrastructure support and maybe expanding whether it be awareness for the company or the potential to, I guess, um, you know, either acquire new cost, new, new customers or, you know, something along those lines. So, so they are, you know, going through and, you know, working with the libraries, renovating the spaces, making it more accommodating for users, etc. And the, the expectation is that would work out to either be at a supporting of the infrastructure or to, you know, potentially lead to, to opportunities there. So um, this partnership between Edifocal and the Jamaica Library Service is, is intended to expand the offerings for access to digital learning in a safe space for communities and students. The JLS will provide the physical space for students to attend virtual classes access through the Edifocal Academy. All right, so what this sounds to me, so for example, you might have uh, students in communities that may not have access to consistent internet, so now they're able to now access any focal service through the library, so it works as, as a mutual partnership for them, while the library gets the benefit of having the spaces, you know, renovated and maybe brought up to a, a better standard, right? So that's what we're seeing with a partnership. So 111 public libraries 
um, across 13 parishes, right? Um, let's see what the last one. No, well, we spoke about that before in terms of the acquisition, so I don't think I need to go back to that. So those are the three highlights in terms of news. So what I wanted to do is kind of talk about a little bit, um, you know, where I think the company is headed. So we've seen um, the strategy for acquisition. We've seen the strategy for partnerships. So I think we're going to hear more of the same for the remainder of the year going into next year. I'm expecting to see more information in terms of the, the, the clients or the corporate expansion of, of Edifocal business. That, that's really where I'm, I'm expecting to see most of their revenue growth come from. Now, I mean, the report will, will tell us, but that's, that's my expectation. And in terms of the, the Edifocal learn side, it, it's going to be more of the same, I think, with, with possibly, you know, opportunities to, to expand or grow that based on students, based on partnerships with like the JLS and, and so on. So that's my expectation. I did say when we did the prospectus review that the revenue target that they had was, was an interesting one. As I said, at six months, they are a little bit less than half of what that target was, I believe. Um, so, you know, let's see how, how the Q3 financials look, but it's definitely, you know, education, technology, definitely um, interesting things, I think, uh, for our future as a country and, you know, the world. So I think they're positioned to take advantage of, 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 of a lot of things in the space. Uh, yeah, try and there's, there's also, you know, Edifocal Academy. So I really think that there, there are good opportunities for them. Uh, what I would like to see, and maybe we, we can, you know, invite Gordon to speak with us again, is to, to understand what, you know, fully how that 200 million will be, will be deployed. Um, you know, we like to get specifics here. Sometimes we're not able to get the full details until after the event has passed. So we'll, you know, stay tuned for that. Um, in terms of the stock price, I think, you know, where it is now, it's, it's definitely uh, more opportunity for growth. We see, we see where the, the all-time high is 420. It is now 275. So maybe at least uh, that's where maybe about 28, 30% uh, down from the all-time high. So definitely um, investors were willing to pay as much as 420. If those investors are still holding, they may be, you know, expecting, you know, growth within the next few months. Um, so, yeah, it, it's interesting company to watch. I think that <clears throat> I think that they have uh, great opportunities for expansion based on on the technology. So it really comes down to, you know, whether or not they can, you know, cement those partnerships and continue to execute on what they've already been doing. All right. So I want to thank you guys for watching this stock review. Be sure to give us a like, share the video with those who are fellow investors. We do two stock reviews per month. First and third Wednesdays of each month is the usual schedule. If there is an IPO, we'll definitely try to cover that or any other offer would have covered the PBS preference share a few months ago. So it really depends on what's out. But if all things go all things go well, first and third Wednesdays for our stock reviews until, of course, <laughs> maybe a date or a format change. All right. Thank you so much for watching. Really do appreciate it. Um, be sure to check the links in the description to find out how you can connect with us. And please watch the video that is about to come up right after this learning is the key to successful investing and who doesn't want to invest in some way here at learn grow invest we focus on financial education all with the aim of sharing our knowledge on personal finance investing and building wealth we do this on the foundation of our faith in god if a more holistic approach is what you need check out our grow faith-based financial coaching program Find out more about us at learngrowinvestclub.com and follow us on all social media platforms at learngrow